now that we're moving towards the winter months, you have an area of expertise that I just never have had much experience in, and that's snow, given that I'm in Texas. You're up there in the northeast. And uh, tell me, what is the number, what's one of the top things I want to be thinking about right now coming into the snow season? Or maybe another way to put that would be, is there a, if you could just give us just one strategy that is transformative or has been transformative for you inside your business around snow? Because I know, so here's my experience with Service Autopilot. We have hundreds and hundreds of members that are also in the snow business. And you'll have a conversation with one and he hates the snow business. It's the worst thing that's ever happened. It's horrible. He only does it because he has to. And you'll have another conversation with guys like, I love the snow business. I make so much money. And we've got some clients that all they do is snow and nothing else. So I know there's different opinions. Um, is there one thing that you found that's been really transformative that has made the snow business a better experience for you? Yeah, and I think as an industry as a whole, the major issue is the weather is unpredictable. It's basically legalized gambling, as I like to call it, for four months or five months of the year. Um, the, a lot of people are looking at it as you can make a ton of money. Um, so two or three years ago, we've had just killer winters up in the Northeast where there's just abundance amount of snow and you're just, you're killing it. You're making a ton of money. Um, and last year was one of the, the lowest precipitation years that we've had probably in 10 or 12 years. So a lot of companies struggled and actually went out of business due to that. So I think the key thing is if you're going to be in the snow industries, you need to find a way to basically limit your risk with diversification of your contracts. Um, and a lot of people say that's almost impossible. We figured out a way internally in our company to do that. Our net profit margin after owner draws has been within three to 5% over the last 10 years. So, there's a couple things that go into that. We use a combination of contracts to take the risk out. So whether it be a heavy winter or a light winter, um, we basically balance the ratio of contracts, residential and commercial, and per trip or unlimited trips. So there may be a few people listening that aren't familiar with snow removal or some snow removal contractors because each market's different in how we service these contracts. So there's, there's basically two or three different kinds of contracts. You can have a prepaid unlimited, so you can go out once, or 30 times at the same exact price. You can have a per trip, uh, which is basically you're billing the customer each time you go out, or um, a retainer. So we focus on about 17 trips prepaid on a commercial setting, and then each additional trip thereafter is a discounted amount paid per trip. And what we found success is, and a lot of people look at the model and are surprised that we actually do residential plowing. Um, but in our market, residential plowing, we charge a flat fee for the whole entire season, and it's prepaid up front November 1st. So two of the positives is, A, it's guaranteed money for the whole season. It's going to cover your fixed costs and some of your variable costs to make sure you're going to make at least your minimal margin that you need at the beginning of the year. And it's also going to give you a cash flow injection to go out and buy any of the bulk materials such as salt or sidewalk melt up front at a volume discount. And when you hit some major storms at the beginning of the year, you're going to have the cash flow on hand to pay your employees and subcontractors instead of waiting on payments. Um, and as we go into that, then we offset that risk, obviously, because if it's a really heavy winter, there's going to be a point of diminishing profits after we get past 17 or 18 visits on our residential. So what we try to do is get the majority of our commercial contracts with a ret retainer prepaid to 17 visits. So as we start losing money or losing profitability in the residential, the commercial offsets that. So after 17 trips, we start charging and that starts ramping up the profits there. So we use a, a pretty simple math equation in an Excel sheet that says we need approximately 28% prepaid residential, 10% um, unlimited trips for commercial and about 10% per push billing. And where we find the mix for the commercial retainer at that 17 trips that we bill after is about 52%. Now, each market's different, so these are based on historical averages over the last 20 years. We've been tracking how many trips we go out on a residential or a commercial. We each have different trigger points as far as depth of snow. So the first thing you want to do is go out in your market if you don't know your numbers. Find somebody who's been there, talk to a local weather station. But what what does that look like on average over the last 20 or 30 years in your market? How many trips you're going to make at each trigger depth of snow? And then give your, given on your overhead recovery 
for your snow division, um, those are some math equations that you need to make to see where you feel comfortable to kind of offset the risk and balance it out. So you may not be making a killing every year, but you know predictably you're going to be, in our case, you know, 25 to 28 percent net margin each year. So you're smoothing out the highs and the lows that most companies experience from season to season, going back to your original point, and your margin, your profit margin has been within a few points of, it, of itself each year because you've smoothed the business out. So now you've turned it into something somewhat predictable that you can expect you'll make about a certain amount of money each year. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, exactly. It was a little long-winded answer, but... Um, no, no, it's setting those fantastic. Yes, yeah, so setting those limits in, in our residential model, it doesn't make sense to go over 600 residential driveways. So literally, once we hit 600, the office does not accept another residential plowing count. I don't care if you're next door or across the street and they offer you triple the money. You need to know your limits and be able to fulfill your commitments because in the winter, it's, it's significantly different than a lawn care situation where it may rain all day and you can do it the next day. It doesn't matter if you have a couple inches of snow or, for instance, like last year we had two feet of snow in eight hours. The mm. consumer, whether it be residential or commercial, expects you to be there within a reasonable time to, to fulfill that. And on top of that, you're going to run the risk of labor not showing up or a truck breakdown. So you need to have multiple contingency plans for everything that possibly could happen or eventually that's going to happen. So once you've figured out that matrix of offsetting the risk financially with a, a good mix of uh, contracts that kind of level each other out, whether it's heavy or light winter, then you also need to go and, and build a team and a plan around having qualified subcontractors and backup employees to make sure you can execute that plan. Because the worst thing to do is build and commit to all these people and not be able to fulfill because the truck went down or you had two no-show employees in the middle of the night, which honestly is not uncommon when you're running 23 to 25 crews and you're calling somebody at midnight or one in the morning saying, hey, you need to be in the truck in a half hour. So that's um, there's two sides of that equation that you really need to, to figure out and balance. That 600 number that you gave for 600 residential driveways, was that heavily based on the amount of available labor that you knew you had pre-committed? in terms of contractors or employees. Is that how you arrived at the 600? Uh, originally, it was just a mathematical um, equation. So getting back to the analytical thing, business is fun once you have hard numbers and you can make your business decisions based purely on numbers and not emotion. So mm -hmm. given our price point, we knew 600 residential driveways at the price point we were at was the optimal. So if we went over that, it was going to skew the overhead and stretch us too thin. Um, so we approximately 600 residential driveways, and we run somewhere between 68 and 70 commercial complex and parking lots. Um, they run as separate divisions. They don't interfere with each other, and the equipment is allocated for each, each division, residential and commercial, so that they're done completely separate of each other, so there's no conflict of interest as far as quality and service. Interesting. That's fantastic. Well, Mike, I appreciate all the advice and the insight. You've definitely put in the years and the time to figure this stuff out. So thanks for sharing all of this with us. Yeah, no problem, John. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, pleasure being on uh, the talk with you. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Mike.